In this episode, we're going right back to where my GQ patrol began. Grandpa Spec to off-road weapon. Set out to conquer Australia's toughest tracks. A speedrunner building the GQ from start to finish and all the incredible places it's taken us in between. Stick around to watch the epic transformation. This episode is supported by Tread, Superior Engineering, Opus Campus, and in part by. I bought you another patrol. Patrol 1 and Patrol 2. Fast and you shall receive. Power windows and aircon. It's got all the luxuries you could want. Living the dream, babe. I'm not exactly sure what's happened, but we have ended up with a third four wheel drive. It is a 1995 GQ. Nissan Patrol TD42. Engine has 680,000 Ks on it. Give it a little rev and let's listen to the big 4.2. <laughs> the one on the right. Just like, yeah, well, this is gonna be a fun day. <laughs> oh, listen to it. Before we started modifying the GQ, we gave it a run for its money on some of our local tracks. Living up to the TD42 kettle reputation, it started getting hot, so I was down to SP Complete Automotive for a complete overhaul of the cooling system. We installed an upgraded fan from Quickaz, new genuine water pump, thermostat, radiator, belts, and hoses, and gave it a full radiator flush and a good service. It's no, failed. It's, it's failed. not good. No good. Throw that in the bin. Okay. No, I'll try and test your radiator, but it's a place of shit, so I can't. You video that or what? Yeah. <laughs> Four leaves. So, yeah, right. So, can you just clean it or like. You can, but it's probably blocked on the inside too by the looks of how shit. This one's actually missing half of its thing. It probably don't work properly. Probably doesn't work. So it's just literally a kettle ready to boil. Yeah. The whole cooling system was just a disaster. Yeah. With the cooling system completely rebuilt, we took it for another four wheel drive to test it out. This time on the beach and well, it was much more successful. The car kept very cool. <laughs> From there, we took it to one stop 4x4 shop in Sydney. These guys do custom builds and restorations. Given the GQ is nearly 30 years old, the plan here was to give it a nice tidy up all through the interior and a few external bits and pieces as well. The first step being strip the whole interior back to bare metal. We found a little bit of rust that we had to patch up. We then did some sound deadening, new door trims, a rear door table from Patrol Australia, a sound system overhaul with new speakers, new head unit, and a sub and amp. Nice and shiny front grille with the must-do party headlights, a UHF and antenna set up from Oricom. Swapped the carpet out for some vinyl flooring, some custom seat covers from Razorback, and that was the interior done. Huge! Yeah. Now the interior was done, it was time to start underneath the car, making it strong, capable and ready for tough tracks. Now I wanted to do it properly from the start, from the ground up, so I got myself some GU diffs. I'll pop up on the screen why they are superior over GQ diffs. I managed to get myself a set of these from all 4x4 spares in Newcastle. They have a huge range of second-hand four-wheel drive parts, pretty much have any and everything that you need. The new diffs also contained four three centers, but we pretty much pulled them right down so that we could rebuild them from the ground up, 
with all new brakes, stub axles, seals, bearings, swivel hub rebuild, pretty much any and everything you can do. We fitted Harrop e-lockers to the centers. You know, a bit more cleaning, a bit more cleaning. Use a billion rags on these things. Billion. No exaggeration. Now that we had a pair of fully built twin locked GU diffs, I gave the underneath the car a good clean up back into the workshop where we stripped it right down ready to paint underneath and then we would be able to fit the new diffs or the suspension start really getting into and building this thing up. Uh, we just cleaned up everything underneath as best we can as you can see just sort of take that top layer off the chassis. You're gonna run through uh, how, to, how to pull a diff out? So, how to pull a diff out? We undo everything that's holding it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes out. That's a quick release rear end. Do some patrol on this. Doing a flex or not? You're painting like a French girl or what? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't that SA kick, bruh? <laughs> Pretty much brand new under there now. Fretted a rebuild. To a 2022 GQ model. So how'd that paint go? Worked well? It's black. <laughs> it's all black. The old GQ diffs and all the old suspension have been stripped out, Predator painted all the way underneath, so I was looking pretty smick under there now. It was starting to get very exciting at this point. Bolt those new GU diffs in, along with a full Superior Engineering Hyperflex suspension upgrade. Uh, do you want me, what am I doing? Do you want me to do something? Oh, take it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, some shockies? So what, the shock mounts, uh, the arms mount, then the Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Don't right. bump it, it'll fall off, I'll be pissed off. So don't do it. Okay, right. I won't. Don't bump it. And all those brakes are fully rebuilt, aren't they? All the sweeties in there. Seals and pistons and slides. There's literally nothing that's not new on this front end. Now the Superior Engineering Suspension was a 3-inch Hyperflex kit containing all your upgraded goodies. The Hyperflex radius arms, 2.0 remote res shocks, comp spec, tie rods, drag links, lowers and uppers, pan hards, everything, you name it, it had it. Weeks back. Just doing modifications. Just more mods. Mods, more mods, more better. As Nick just said, it wasn't long and I was back for more mods. First up being, we swapped the GQ steering box over to a GU steering box. Don't need to go to the gym, just leave steering boxes all day. I'm not gym strong, I'm mechanic strong. A new 100 amp hour alternator from Quick As. Some stickers mate. From As, thanks mate, yeah thanks. We had to swap out the Superior Engineering coils for some Dobinson coils as the ones I'd ordered weren't quite long enough for the flex it had so I needed some real long flexi coils. It was time to make the GQ look really cool with some polished Dirty Life wheels from Dynamic Wheel Co. 17 inch Neek 38 offset and they were fitted to some 35 by 12 and a half R17 mud tyres. <laughs> Rubs everywhere. <laughs> That's gonna guard truck right there. I told you, this is gonna have to get some of garden edge now. Oh, 
<laughs> Land cruiser blokes, eh? Hey? <laughs> Next stop on the build was down to analog restorations on the central coast of New South Wales for dent repair and a full respray. The GQ had quite a few dents all over it that had accumulated over the years. The old paint was very bad. The clear coat was coming off everywhere. So we wanted to try and make it look nice. We went with the Predator paint, which is the same paint we used underneath the car, but obviously this time on top. The main color we went with was kind of a champagne gold, similar to the original color. And then I caused an absolute outbreak of rage on the internet when I painted the bottom half of it rose gold. In the end though, I quite liked it. I reckon it came out cool. It was some unique colors and the Predator paint offers really good protection out the bush. Look, a gloss paint would have been stunning and beautiful, but it would have looked like crap after the first few trips away. It just would have been really scratched up and it would have made me cry every time I looked at the car. The GQ was built to tackle tough tracks, not crawl moles. From the painters, it was a quick stop back at one stop, 4x4 shop, to tidy up a few things, some new body mounts, some fresh rubbers, some weather shields, and then from there, it was straight to on the side fab in Newcastle, where we had some custom bar work built for the GQ. The reason I went custom bar work on the GQ was once again, I wanted something that was unique and would stand out. I thought it would be cool to document and showcase how bar work is built from start to finish rather than just buying from a shop and bolting it on your car. And I'd heard awesome things about on the side fab. First time I'd used him, but he makes really strong bar work, pretty much competition standards that I knew would be able to take an absolute beating on all the hard tracks we were gonna be doing. To start with, I went with a bull bar, which we designed there ourselves as we were doing it, and then some front scrubbies and some proper rock sliders. The rear bar was to come later. On the side fab also did a quarter chop down the back of the car for increased clearance to fit those 35 inch tires, departure angle when you're dropping off rock steps, stuff like that. And as well as to fit the rear bar that I had coming. Now that the rig was twin locked, 35s, three inch superior suspension, bar work, heaps of goodies. We took it out my local state forest for a proper test on some tough tracks. <laughs> this thing clunks and bangs around a bit, bloody 30 year old tractor, <laughs> but it did it. I've been driving the GQ around for a little while at this point, and well, if you've ever driven an NA TD42, you will know that they are absolutely horrendous on power, especially once you put bigger tires and weight on them. So it was time for a turbo upgrade. I got a kit from High Performance Diesel, which provided a lot of the parts we needed. Then I had to source some extras myself as well. I'm on my knees like a cheap hooker. Good old Alfie, mate. <laughs> Hold on, you're framing all the ones. You hear them tapping? Yeah. Not tapping. ideal, bro. I don't rate it, eh? It's out of spec, I can tell from my fingers. Doing the tappets was the first job, getting oh, those God. valve clearances yeah. within spec. Remove the old exhaust and manifold. <laughs> and be gone. Bolt the new exhaust manifold and Garrett turbo from high performance diesel on. A stainless snorkel and airbox from Patrol Doctor so that, that engine was nice and watertight and give plenty of air for that turbo to suck in. A fresh set of refurbished injectors set for turbo spec. The GQs come with a non-compensated 10mm fuel pump. You can leave that when you turbo them, 
but we went with a bigger fuel pump to get more fuel into it. It's a 12 mil one. After all the positive feedback I got on the rose gold bottom door trims, we decided to paint the rocker cover rose gold as well. Holy God! You know, like that? Isn't that cute? <laughs> it looks like nice oh. on that. Everything was starting to come together now, bolting bits and pieces back on. Drilled a hole in the sump for the oil return from the turbo. Looks really good, eh? Yeah. It's real sparkly. So good. I quite like it, Tyler. Yeah. Stands out. You know what they say, Tyler? What? Stand out or miss out. <laughs> Gross. Cut a hole in the bonnet, put the bonnet scoop on so that we had nice airflow through to the top mount inner cooler. I went with the top mount inner cooler simply because of the fact that I didn't have room for a front mount inner cooler. He's there. He's there. He's Bent paired. these a little bit. Look at that. Got some real estate. Made it work. We overcome, improvised and adapted. The gearbox was dropped next so that we get in there and put a new clutch in. We also did the rear main seal while we were going. The upgraded clutch is to handle the power that the turbo gives. If you leave the factory clutch, it will start slipping and get destroyed very quickly. While we were under there, a red back exhaust went on and then the car was ready to start up freshly turboed. First start of the big first start, turbo. Mate. Oh man, that looks good. She ready, ready for Christmas. Ready to jingle. <laughs> Whilst we were doing the turbo, in the background we had added on a front runner roof rack and a rear bar from Razzler. The GQ is starting to really come together now. The build was nearly complete, but we were coming up to Christmas. It was time for a family trip away and properly test out the rig on the road one week on Fraser Island. Had an absolutely awesome trip away to Fraser Island. The GQ loved it, no issues with it at all. And it was really good to test it out on the road. There was a couple of more modifications to go before the big trip, Tasmania. We did a little setup in the back with some drawers from Drifter and a Red Arc Go Block. I then decided that I wanted some rear scrubbies to get me through Tassie, so I was backed on the side fab to get those on. Now the car was fully protected from all angles. And then the last mod was actually done when we hit Tassie with help from Timmy, and that was a worn high mount winch. Now the rig was fully built and ready for the trip of a lifetime. One of the most incredible trips I've had on the road. Three weeks on Tassie, tackling some of the toughest tracks that we could find. Now before we end the video, a question that I have been getting constantly throughout the build and I know that people will want to know is how much did it cost? 
I have been a little bit hesitant to answer that question because obviously we have put a lot of money and time into this build. Before I give a rough estimate of the cost, I will say that this GQ build was to the extreme. But a GQ doesn't have to be built like this. They can pretty much go anywhere on a two inch lift, 33 inch tires and a locker or two. In the future, we are looking at doing a budget build that will cost much less and show what you can do to a four wheel drive without spending huge amounts of money. I guess what I'm saying is if it's your passion and your love, it's just what you do and what your money goes into. Whether it be fishing, golf, drift cars, any sort of hobby. Timmy's rig, for example, that you would have seen on all my Tassie episodes, it was fully self-funded and it's pretty much had all the work done to it that mine has, plus a crate engine, plus a chop. But that's what he absolutely loves doing and he's put all his time and money into that rig. And then I will get to the point, <laughs> the price of the GQ. We wrote up a list and we came to about $70,000 of modifications that were done to the vehicle. The original cost price was $9,000. So that puts you at about $80,000 for the fully built GQ. That's not including labor. And I know that might seem like a lot of money to people and it is. I've also had help from some amazing companies along the way, as well as putting a lot of my own money into this build to make the dream four wheel drive for myself. Again, this is my full-time job, my full-time love and hobby in life, and I put everything into it. <laughs> you know, all my money, every day of the week, we're working on these cars, making the videos, the content that you guys love. But there it is. Massive thank you to everyone that's watched all these episodes, all the companies that have helped along the way, supported these builds, all the work that was done at these various places. I'm super keen to take this rig away on more trips and I can't wait to see where it takes us. Ready, ready? 20 newton meters. Feeling my elbow, ready? How did it click? 20 Agadagas. Not at, nah, not 20 Agadagas. <laughs> that's the different. You can only have six Agadagas. <laughs> Maximum. Not too tight, you want to snap them. Not too loose, you don't want to them. Build in torque wrench. Right here. <laughs> so, you know, if we had a 12 mil right now, Tyler. Pull the cover off, bang him in, mate. We're only halfway there. He's dead. <laughs> 12mm, 18 mm 20 mm party. But yeah, this thing in here, if you want to pin the camera onto it, that's a 10mm fuel pump. That's that's disappointment right there. 10mm fuel yeah, pump. No good, no compensator. Disappointment. Need 12mm. Need no good, should be in the bin. <laughs> Anything but that. Good drive, Sean. Good drive, bro. And I'm all for them. They're stronger than me. You barely lift it. You lift it. You're piss weak, Sean. I like you. You're all fat, bro. I'm all muscle. Fat. Muscle. I only got fat because every time I shag your missus, she give me a cookie. Give me the cookie, man. I wonder where they cookie go. Kids, man. Kids. <laughs>